Hello and welcome to our thrilling weekly journey through the ever-expanding cryptoverse. I'm your host, Corbin Fraser, and we've got another great show lined up for you. Get ready for a huge red flag in U.S. banking sector, another massive grant program from a top blockchain, and the latest news on the fastest-growing network in the space. Plus, find out why the Mt. Gox distributions probably aren't going to kill Bitcoin. But first, huge, huge congratulations to WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, who has been released from prison after serving five years on a U.S. Espionage Act charge. Assange has been chased to the ends of the earth for over a decade because the media platform that he founded published materials that old Uncle Sam didn't really like. Connection to crypto is, of course, that WikiLeaks famously began accepting Bitcoin donations back in 2011 after traditional payment processors like PayPal, Visa, as well as MasterCard cut them off, which is a playbook that's been uh, used quite often when they don't really like what you're saying. Interestingly, uh, at the time, Satoshi himself pleaded with WikiLeaks to reconsider the decision to accept Bitcoin donations, saying WikiLeaks has kicked the hornet's nest and the swarm is headed towards us. While Bitcoin managed to survive that test, you know, I think uh, Assange had a little bit of a rough go there. Happy to see that he's out. But uh, now it seems Ethereum is overcoming some bigger hurdles as well, which is pretty exciting. The uh, U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission has abandoned its investigation into Ethereum 2.0, deciding not to treat ETH sales as securities transactions. This follows consensus pushing the SEC to confirm that the approval of ETH ETFs in May, based on ETH being a commodity, would end that probe. While this is a big win, consensus says there's still work to do. They're aiming to get clear legal guidelines on things like decentralized swaps, as well as staking, arguing that these types of things don't break securities laws. And we are going to show an exciting little chart here. Switching gears, Bitcoin had a rough start to the week, dropping below 60 k for the first time since May. Over $140 million in BTC long positions were liquidated, contributing to a broader $326 million wipeout in the crypto market. Both long and short positions were hit with over 85,000 crypto traders liquidated. The largest single liquidation was a $15 million BTC USDT position over on Binance. But don't fret, Bitcoin has already bounced back above the 60k mark where it remains at least uh, at the time of this report re- recording uh interestingly everyone i know is still buying bitcoin these are opportunities that most people are just jumping on um the fear i guess is that is this it is the is the bear moved in the bulls have have given up i don't know we'll see so uh some investors are blaming the recent mount gox news uh on bitcoin's dip and that they're saying this is all mount gox liquidations you know, the news, of course, is that around $9 billion in Bitcoin that's been locked up for 11 years is about to be distributed to its rightful owners. But according to Alex Thorne from Galaxy Digital, the upcoming distributions to Mt. Gox creditors won't disrupt the market much. His theory is that most of these creditors are actually long-term holders who likely won't rush to sell their coins. They might you know, liquidate a little bit here and there, but they've been waiting long enough and they're probably going to keep holding given that they've seen the rise of Bitcoin in those 11 years. This could, of course, ease any major market pressure. Additionally, the locked up Bitcoin won't be distributed all at once. So it's unlikely that we're going to see these like massive sell pressures going on all at once. So uh, next up, we've got a financial doom prediction for you. You know, we always like those. But first, let me tell you about Pepe Unchained, who's sponsoring this week's show. Uh, folks, Pepe has been with us since in the crypto space from, you know, before it was even declared a, a hate symbol by the Anti-Defamation League back in 2016. This anthropomorphic frog who we lovingly use to express our emotions in text-based environments such as Telegram and Discord and Slack has always been a prisoner chained to his clunky Layer 1 server room. Pepe Unchained is hoping to change that, unleashing this uh, little racist dog whistle to its own Ethereum Layer 2, where it's hoped that Pepe and other memes will proliferate at a previously unseen speed. If this floats your boat, head over to pepeunchained.com to get in on the action. But do remember, folks, meme coins and meme chains, they're they are highly speculative. You may lose everything that you put in. So keep it fun. Play it like the game that it is. You know, check out these cool little animated Pepe's. They're fun. Uh, moving over to the banking sector, market strategist Gareth Soloway has raised some red flags, noting deficiencies in crisis management plans from major U.S. banks like Bank of America, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, and J.P. Morgan Chase, as highlighted by federal regulators. Soloway warned of potential troubles ahead, citing banks offloading significant bad debt amidst uh, high interest rates and challenges in mortgage-backed securities and commercial real estate. So the strategist also observed technical weaknesses in bank stocks like J.P. Morgan and Citigroup, indicating underlying issues within the sector. 
Okay, let's let's take a look at the latest darling over in the the fast moving cryptoverse. Ton, T O N, high speed, low fee blockchain developed by the team behind Telegram, which is of course one of the most popular chat apps in the world right now. With Ton recently breaking into the top ten coins by market cap, Pantera Capital plans to raise funds for a new investment round in Ton Coin. The American investment firm aims to attract investors with a minimum investment threshold of 250k. Ton recently achieved an all-time high despite market downturns driven by growing interest in ton-based games such as TapSwap as well as NotCoin. Uh, in more ton news, ton chain coins have surged to a combined value exceeding $20 billion driven by TonCoin's 18.4% appreciation against the US dollar over the past month. The top 10 tokens on the ton network including gaming and meme tokens like Not as well as Redo contribute significantly to this valuation, highlighting ton's growing influence in the growing blockchain ecosystem. So speaking of promising blockchain technology, Bitcoin.com News recently chatted with Jeff Yin, the founder at uh, Merlin Chain, which is a Bitcoin native layer two solution designed to uh, enhance the scalability and functionality of the Bitcoin network. So Yin discussed the evolving landscape of Bitcoin-based decentralized applications and their differentiation from Ethereum virtual machine dApps. He emphasized the necessity for Bitcoin dApps to innovate uniquely while leveraging the strengths from both ecosystems to attract more users and developers. So Yin highlighted Bitcoin's recent upgrades like Taproot and Segwit, which have enhanced transaction efficiency and privacy, supporting increased institutional adoption. He acknowledged Bitcoin's growing pains, such as high transaction fees, but noted parallels to Ethereum's early challenges with Layer 2 solutions, suggesting that Bitcoin can and should and will adopt uh, and adapt to these to these changes. Uh, Merlin Chain's experience with asset bridging and development challenges illustrated the complexities and opportunities in integrating various assets into the Bitcoin blockchain. Despite hurdles, innovations like ordinals, token standards like BRC20, BRC420, ARC20 are expanding Bitcoin's utility beyond simple transactions, fostering new use cases, and of course, ecosystem growth. And in other innovation news, the Phantom Foundation has earmarked 200 million FTM valued at approximately $120 million to facilitate the transition of partners to its new Sonic network. This allocation includes grants for native applications, strategic support for decentralized applications and infrastructure tools. And Phantom is actively collaborating with numerous dApps and top tier infrastructure providers across different sectors, signaling its dedication to establish a resilient platform and community. This initiative represents the first step towards the launch of Sonic, which is designed to handle up to 200 million transactions daily. Personally, very hyped for this one. I always am excited to see more high throughput being added into this EVM stack and uh, excited to see what happens with Phantom. Finally, let's slow it down, though. Forget about the dip and touch grass with our last story this week. We have a huge announcement from grass. Data layer for AI. See what I did there? That's good, eh? Uh, Grass, which is an AI decentralized physical infrastructure network or DPIN project uh, focused on data scraping, has integrated Solana wallets into its rewards distribution system. This update enables Grass to trace the origin of scraped data to specific nodes and reward them based on the data's value relative to the overall network. By associating Solana wallets with user accounts, Grass enhances data tracking accuracy, ensuring transparency and reliability in data collection. So this move aims to prevent data poisoning and biases in AI training, fostering trust among developers and users alike. And that's a wrap for this week's Crypto News Roundup. Stay on top of the ever-changing world of cryptocurrency by subscribing to our channels for the latest updates and insights. Don't miss out on grabbing some of Bitcoin.com's ecosystem token Verse and joining the Verse Lounge on Telegram to connect and chat with our team. We've got some big things in the pipeline, including the impending launch of VCard purest web3 debit card in the cryptoverse so join our fast growing community to stay in the loop thanks for tuning in until next time keep your wallet secure and keep exploring new opportunities see you guys soon